Hello everyone, today we are building a $350 gaming PC using all new parts. You can easily copy this budget build right now and upgrade in the future. Hit the like button and let's start. This video is sponsored by SCD Key, a website where you can get keys for your Windows system. Currently Windows 11 Pro Key sells for $31, but if you use a Tech25 discount code you'll get 25% off. This code also works for Windows 10 Pro and Microsoft Office 2016 keys. The activation process is very straightforward. In Windows activation settings, click the change button, enter the key, next, activate and you're all set. So if you want to easily activate your Windows system, I'll leave links to SCD key website in the description below. I call this build easy because instead of buying all parts separately, I'm using an ASRock DeskMid X300. This is a PC barebone which includes an ITX case, motherboard and a power supply. It currently sells for $170 on Newegg which is a good value for the price. In the box we have a power cord, Wi-Fi adapter, screws, two SATA cables, installation guide and the PC case itself. The design is pretty cool, just one screw and I can slide out the tray with all components. Inside we have an ATX size 500 watts power supply. It is bronze certified, that's nice, has short cables to make cable management easy and the fan inside is reversed to intake air from the back, which is a really nice airflow improvement. And we also have an AM4 motherboard pre-installed. It's a pretty nice budget motherboard and it has everything we need. M.2 for Wi-Fi, M.2 Gen 3 slot for storage, PCIe Express Gen 3 slot and 4 RAM slots. On the back we have a display, HDMI and VGA ports along with 4 USB, Ethernet and audio ports. On the front it has a power button with indication, another 4 USBs, one type C and audio port. I really like this design, I have been rocking a similar system for a while now and it is super convenient. Now to complete this build I need to get a CPU, RAM and storage. With only one $180 left in the budget, there is not much to consider. I went with the Ryzen 5 4600G. I think it's a very good fit here. For $100 we get 6 cores, 12 threads with up to 4.2 GHz clock, but most importantly it comes with a Radeon Vega 7 integrated graphics, which can humble even some dedicated GPUs. Another option for the CPU is Ryzen 5 5600G, which is slightly faster, but overall you get the same gaming performance. If you can catch it on sale or or combo with a free RAM kit, definitely go with it. Both CPUs come with a stock cooler so the installation will be the same. To avoid damaging the pins, let's install the CPU right away. Open the socket, align a little triangle and gently place the CPU. Make sure it's in place and close the socket. And that's it, now let's install the cooler. Unscrew the stock mounting from the plate that's behind the motherboard and just screw the stock cooler to it. Screws go all the way. The cooler already has a layer of thermal paste so don't need to worry about that. Connect the CPU fan to the motherboard and it's done. Now let's pick the RAM. The optimal will be the 16GB DDR4 kit. There are a bunch of options, I went with the kit from Team Group that has 3600MHz speed. Installation is easy following the instructions, I installed it in the second and fourth slots. Now let's install a Wi-Fi card, which is included with the desk meet. First need to connect these antenna cables to the card by pressing on them. And this might have been the hardest part of this build. Eventually I got it and installed a Wi-Fi card in the slot. The two antennas go to the corners of the case. They have a flat side, so you have to position it right to get it through the hole. After that, just secure with the washer and nut. For the storage, I went with the 500GB SSD. 500GB is still an optimal amount for budget builds. Our motherboard supports up to Gen 3, so no need to buy Gen 4. It might be a big con for some people, but I think Gen 3 is still a decent choice for the budget PC. Everything is installed, so let's connect the included power supply. We don't need SATA and PCIe, so I cable match them to the side and connected the CPU power cable and 24 pin cable to the motherboard. Then I secured the power supply with the screws. There is almost no gap between the cooler and the power supply, so have to make sure there are no cables in between. And that's the whole build, very simple. Now it's only left to slide it back in the case, stick the rubber legs and screw on the antennas. I connected the power and monitor and the PC started with no problems. I then
then installed Windows 11 on it. It is very easy, only need to create bootable USB stick with the tool Microsoft provides. Once the Windows system is installed and all updates are done, there is one more thing left to enable, the XMP profile for your RAM. To do that, just power on the PC and keep pressing delete to enter BIOS. From there, go to OC Tweaker, scroll down to XMP setting and set it to XMP 2.0 profile. Then just save and exit, PC will restart and now your RAM should be working at the correct speed, 3600 MHz in my case. Since we are already in task manager, let's quickly go through the specs. We have 6 core 12 thread CPU with 4.2 GHz max clock, 8 MB of L3 cache and Vega 7 graphics, 16 GB of RAM on 3600 MHz frequency and 500 GB SSD. Here is a speed check. Overall, the PC is responsive in browsing and it can easily be a great working station PC as well. But let's move to the gaming performance. I'm testing everything with a 1080p 165Hz monitor. In 3 Mark, PC scored almost 1500 points, which is pretty good considering it is integrated graphics. Moving on to online games, in Valorant, on low settings, I'm getting over 150 FPS all the time. The game runs very smoothly and it's ready for competitive play. In CS2, I got a less impressive frame rate. With the low settings, I see around 60 FPS, but I'm experiencing some freezes in the loaded scenes. I then set FSR in balanced mode and got over 70 FPS with much fewer freezes. Moving to Fortnite, on performance mode, low textures, 100% 3D resolution, I see around 80 FPS most of the time. The game is very playable and looks good with these settings. I'm actually impressed with the Vega 7 performance so far. Let's raise the bar. In PUBG, on very low settings, native 1080p, I'm getting over 50 FPS in the buildings and around 45 in loaded scenes. Despite the console FPS, the game runs without freezes and it is totally playable. I got a similar result in Apex Legends. With the low settings, I see a 35 to 60 FPS range depending on location. The frame time is not that good, but still playable. In Call of Duty Warzone, on minimum settings, native 1080p, I'm getting 20 to 30 FPS with a horrible frame time. So that's the first game where we can't go without FSR. The game supports FSR 3.0, so after enabling it in performance mode with frame generation, I see around 60 FPS with much better frame time. Surprisingly, the game is not that blurry. FSR 3.0 does it way better than 1.0. Frame generation is also a huge help. I see a micro freezes sometimes, but overall the game is a lot more playable. I also tested the finals and with FSR 2.0 in ultra performance mode, I got around 45 FPS. This game is very dynamic, so it's not really a pleasure to play it that way, but it runs. I think this build shows a good performance in online games, considering it is integrated graphics. Let's check on single player games. In Elden Ring, with the low settings, native Full HD, I got pretty stable, over 30 FPS. The frame time is not perfect, but the game feels very playable. Another game that surprised me is Days Gone. On low settings, the game runs without freezes, even in loaded scenes, and it looks pretty good. I then ran a Cyberpunk benchmark with the FSR in ultra performance mode and got 34 average FPS. The game runs with the console FPS, but it's not really enjoyable with such image quality. I think this PC is great for those who want to build a budget gaming PC right now and upgrade it with a GPU later. Vega 7 has impressive performance and it will definitely allow you to play many games until you buy a dedicated GPU. We have an empty slot ready for the GPU and I think the best fit here will be the Radeon RX 6600, which has been the best GPU for budget gamers for some time now. I already got one, so we'll be upgrading this PC in the upcoming video, so stay tuned. Let me know what you think about this PC in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.